Eye is in the privileged position of having a personal invite to shoot Norwegian reindeer. His first buck was one of a large herd intercepted as they migrated across this mountainous terrain. With the buck gralloped and butchered on the ice, the hunters return to camp. It's already been an exceptional trip, but there is a second ticket left for a mature male, and Trigger gives it to Kai. The day starts with binoculars scanning the mountains. This is what they are after, a mass of animals swarming across the landscape, but can they get in front of them? It's a waiting game, but it means that Kai has a chance to learn more about these deer. We just see a massive group across the very top of the mountain. All very exciting, it's all going on, the mountains are alive. So the plan is going to be, we're going to head back down towards the cabin, pick up some waders, and we're going to cross over the lake because we have a feeling they're bedded down behind this like little valley in the mountains. And I think that they could be resting there. They seem to follow the same routes or tracks as they've done for thousands of years as our, our forefathers were using for trapping them. But we are now in such a position, so we know the rain is now being spooked by the other, other stalkers in other areas, will come this way. And we know about in 100 meters wide where they will be passing. So that's where we're sitting, just waiting for them to arrive. And if they won't arrive today, they arrive tomorrow. That's the best way of reindeer stalking, actually, to find those really good old positions and stalk them. They spot a small herd on a rock face, and after a two hour ascent, Kai gets into position. Trigger points out the buck to take. They want one past his prime. Our male is isolated from the group and Kai takes his chance. The large buck drops yes. to the Zara in 308. Wow. It's a beast. The granic and butchery are meticulous. We've got a good set of knives, we've got a saw, we've got a sponge to clean off the blood. And from then on, once we start taking skinning and taking the meat off, we bring it over here onto this sterilised sheet where we'll lay the pieces of meat where they will dry off slightly before putting them in the rucksack. Now we've got these also these sterilised cloth bags that we put the meat inside. They'll go into our backpacks and we'll take it back to the cabin. And from there on, we'll keep them there in a good temperature before we set off home in a few days. But the first stage now is now we've it. We'll start butchering. All the meat will be taken off the mountain in rucksacks, apart from the offal. Even though the Chernobyl nuclear disaster was nearly 30 years ago, it still leaves its mark. It is contaminated. We're just telling me that the kidneys and the, and the liver, they don't really eat these uh, here because of the Chernobyl disaster in 86, that the wind came in this direction and heavily uh, contaminated the soil and um, the landscape. And there's still traces of it now. So with well, the rest of the animals are okay, where it collects in, in all these kidneys and liver, they uh, prefer not to eat these. There's plenty for Kai to cook with, including the large heart. So with the heart, you cut a certain way, try to put it back together. You cut down and around, and that will open up into one piece. So we can smoke this, slow cook it, cut it up, make some delicious eating out of that. But the heart will have to wait for tonight. Trigger has told Kai that testicles are on the menu. Put the meat in the sheet for a while so it dries out with the wind, so nothing's leaking too much. So it's all contained, we'll wrap that up, and we take that back to the cabin. Just in case they don't go down as well as Trigger hopes, Kai is also rustling up a stew using reindeer shoulder. It's been quite a long day. So I think a good hearty stew 
will be well deserved. So in here right now we've got about just over about a kilo of, uh, of diced shoulder, some onions, and a bit of garlic, seasoning, cooking in butter. So uh, Trigger is just showing us how to prepare reindeer testicle. Apparently this is delicacy, is that right? It is a delicacy. But you have to de-skin them to get off this very tough surface of it. That's its nature. So you can see they look like more like fishy things. Yes. And now I will fry them in a pan, add some salt sugar and we eat them with flatbread. Sounds absolutely delicious. I really can't wait to try them, Trigger. No, <laughs> it mm. is a delicacy. <laughs> Testicles. We can also add for the taste of mountains and wilderness uh, some fat from this same buck. This fat is delicious. It's really a delicacy. And it's very healthy. I mean, the slow carb people eating so much unhealthy fat, they will die of it, but this one they can eat. But they should have to pay like a million a kilo, <laughs> because it's very hard to get. It's simple, but the ingredients are hard to come across. So what does the game cook think? The saltiness of the fat, the texture of the, uh, the testicle. <laughs> I can't stop but laugh every time I say testicle. <laughs> <laughs> on the flatbread it's a very good combination and this is a good type of fat so thank you very much Trigger and everyone here Yuk Le Tak Edible by all accounts if you want to learn more about Kai's clothing go to shooterking.co.uk and if you want to find out about the Zawa range of rifles go to zawa.de